What up, what up? It is your boy BQ. This is the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. Thanks for visiting the channel. As always, a couple things I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, one, and many of you guys already know this, I'm just kind of giving my thoughts on it. Uh, Miro, you know, turned down Impact Wrestling uh, for AEW. So, going to talk about that a little bit. What I'm going to talk about first, I know you guys want me to get into that, but what I want to talk about first, this is a little, you know, little known or uh, some of you viewed it as little importance, but Impact recently made a hiring. Um, a gentleman name of Ant Evans uh, used to work for UFC, lifelong wrestling fan. I know, I know you, some of you guys uh, have already seen that you followed his Twitter and everything and, you know, shared the link. So some of you are already familiar with this. Uh, he was responsible for, uh, you know, uh, UFC's UK division, uh, worked in the PR department, and then he was later in charge of Fight Pass. So, you know, based off that, I did a little more research on the dude. So that's kind of what I want to get into because it's actually something um, might be a little, new, a little news to you, but it's something I'm kind of excited about. If you know anything about what I find important in television and wrestling and, and things like that. So, uh, first of all, when we're talking about, um, you know, working with a UK division, you know, Impact was was really the promotion who at one point started bringing uh, UK wrestlers to the forefront. And e even to the point where people were saying, well, you know, can they stop messing with these UK wrestlers? And you know what I mean? And then you go, you know, you fast forward several years later, UK, you know, the UK scene was real hot. Uh, getting wrestlers from that country was, was the, the hot thing to do, you know, and, and it was something Impact did, you know, prior to it becoming what, what was hot on the streets. So someone who has, you know, experience with, uh, you know, building a division out there, you know, um, I, I just think there's some value in that. That's not really what I'm most excited about. I'm just saying, I think there's a little bit of value in that and how you present, you know, uh, athletes from the UK, but uh, working, having uh, experience working in the PR department, that's somewhere where, you know, Impact could probably use a fresh set of eyes, fresh set of ears, fresh ideas, and, you know, maybe, you know, because UFC, obviously, much bigger company and a, and a much different industry that's had its own share of uh, scandals and, and things of that nature. So, you know, maybe, and it's not to put down who they have in PR right now, that's not what I'm saying, but, you know, to bring a fresh set of eyes, ears, you know, maybe we still have a Michael Elgin, a part of the company or, or a Dave Christ or, or Joey Ryan for some of you that like him, you know what I mean? Because if you look at the way... Uh, when that whole movement happened and wrestlers were getting let go, you know, AEW didn't let anyone go from that. They found a different approach and, you know, no one's, no one's complaining that they didn't fire anyone to where impact took, okay, we got to get rid of these people. There's obviously a, a history of uh, problems that impact has had. And it's not so much now it's more so from the TNA days, but someone who has experience with public relations, I think, and, and again, on a much bigger scale, I think that's really uh, positive to add to the company. And then what I'm really in charge, what excited of was that he was in charge of UFC fight pass at one point. And, you know, I've had uh, my issues with the impact plus app. We were just talking about in the cool factor podcast last week that for the paid version of impact plus there's, there's no value uh, in my opinion. Uh, there's, there's always so much more they could do with it. Uh, so much more they could do with behind the scenes for the big matches. And even if you look at just NWA's YouTube content with uh, 10 pounds of gold, 15, but what is it? 10 pounds. Yeah, it is 10. My bad. But you, you, there's so much more that you can do little content pieces. And for, again, someone that was involved on a much bigger scale, uh, I think can bring an, again, fresh ideas to the table. Um, he, if you if you follow UFC, the uh, the the uh, Hall of Fame was something that he played a big role in revamping in having different wings: the modern wing, pioneer wing, great fights wing, uh, and out of the cage uh, contributors ring. I mean, a wing. You know what I mean? So he's someone who who thinks outside the box a little bit, can bring a lot of changes to the table, and you know, really with impact, there's been some changes and then some things that have just stayed the same no matter effing what and just just fresh ideas i've been calling for fresh ideas 
for a really, really, really long time. And, you know, based off what I was reading about him, he understands the, the importance of storytelling. And I don't mean so from a kayfabe wrestling standpoint, but uh, he was trying to tell a story with the, the UFC Hall of Fame. You know, um, just, just seems like he's, he's a creative thinker, creative guy. And, you know, with the UFC Hall of Fame stuff, he was focusing on people who deserve to be remembered who weren't. And you think about the TNA, uh, the, the history of TNA and the stars that, you know, we'd watched for several years. And the company doesn't really acknowledge because, you know, when, they're, when they were like, okay, let's, talk, let's promote the TNA library. It's the Samoa Joes, it's the AJs, it's the Christopher Daniels. And they still talk about those guys to this day on television. And, you know, th- there are some stars that you forget you know, were part of the company that, that played a big role, even if it was a, for a short amount of time. And, uh, you know, just for that, uh, just looking at it like that, where we said people who deserve to remember that weren't, you know, maybe we can find a way to make the library more engaging and just more interesting, you know, same with the impact and 60 stuff. Again, it's it just fresh ideas. And, you know, the last thing I'm going to, I want to bring up here. Um, he, spoke i i wrote this whole quote down so he he you know spoke with don king and he says quote the great don king told me this once when i was a boxing reporter what's the he asked them what's the biggest show you've ever worked on don king responds it's always the next one if you want to be a promoter the biggest show is always the next one that's the promotion's job promotions are like great whites there has to be a forward motion or they cease to exist. And you kind of think about everything with slam reversary that they were building up, building up, building up. And then, you know, you look things now, things are in a good place, but, and I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong, but you have to look at it and be like, wow, you know, like we knew that the momentum was going to go downwards after slam reversary. It was a challenge for the company to how do we, how do we keep this going into bound for glory? You know what I mean? And, you know, I think they're doing a decent job for us impact fans, but for the people whose, whose ears were perking up during slam anniversary, I don't know that that's necessarily there. So again, you know, fresh ideas. And, you know, I, I also read that when he was doing his research for the hall of fame, that he was contacting the baseball football uh, pro wrestling hall of fame, rock and roll hall of fame, getting outside of the box ideas and getting pointers because, you know, I've always said like, you can't always think like a wrestler. You, you can't treat wrestling like a wrestling promotion, like a wrestling show. Like you sometimes you just have to treat it like television, treat it like a sport. And uh, I, I don't say that on camera on the podcast too much, but I say that offline quite a bit. And that's always been my mindset. So uh, I, I know I kind of went off on that for a bit and that's probably not even why you clicked on a link, but it's something that I'm actually excited about. Someone just fresh behind the scenes that could actually, you know, that could just potentially bring something new and exciting to the table. Uh, let's talk Miro real quick. Uh, Impact did make him an offer, a uh, six-figure offer. He was the priority for them to sign when when re, you know WWE made their releases and everything. And you, you've probably seen this online, but he didn't sign with Impact because he just didn't want to, you know. And that's as honest as an answer as as, as you're going to see sometimes in this wrestling world. He said everyone was nice, kind. You know, I'm sure they made a very good competitive offer but you know it goes back to what i've said before we need that next kurt angle to sign with a company and with with AEW being competition that, that's going to be pretty hard to do because face it no matter even these guys that they just signed there's about a 90 percent probability that their preference was to go to AEW. um and it depends. Sometimes we want different things. So, you know, that schedule, like I said, is a weekly schedule to where impact is, is, you know, clumped in together into four, four, six days or whatever. So there's, there are benefits. So to some wrestlers, maybe that schedule is, you know, more to their, their benefit. But, um, you know, he wasn't a guy that I thought we re- we really had a shot at, you know, seeing an impact. You know, I was hoping he would because I was saying he he would be that that next current angle. Guys like Moxley, guys like um, Jericho, you know, obviously went over there. But, you know, had those guys actually, you know, chose Impact Wrestling, then that's really what I feel is going to start that next wave 
of popularity is, you know, as long as it's the secondary or tertiary option, even if wrestlers, I'm not saying they're settling by any means, but I do think for most wrestlers, it's a secondary tertiary option. And, you know, he was honest in just saying he just didn't want to go there. You know, I think he felt that his brand had been built to a certain point that it needed to be on, you know, uh, continue on the big stage. And, you know, that makes sense. So will we see that? Uh, I've, may, I've, you know, I've said several times that at the beginning of the year, I said Michael Elgin was going to be their biggest signing because of AEW's competition. Now, obviously, with COVID, things change, and we saw new names come in. So my my statement, in my opinion, is really invalid because, you know, COVID happened and there was new opportunities, which was really exciting, you know. Let me talk to you about one more thing. Um, I should have said this at the opening here. Alex Riley. Someone brought this to my attention the other day. They sent me a picture of Alex Riley's tweet. He used to be in WWE and NXT. Let me tell you, I was a huge fan of this dude. And I think when he was fired from NXT, I want to say I stopped watching at that point, if, if I remember correctly. Uh, that's how long ago I'd seen, uh, I had watched the NXT product. But he was a dude that when WWE fired him, I felt he had that EC3 aura about him that if he came over, he could be that next big star for them, that they could kind of repackage and restart. You know what I mean? I thought they had that ability with him. So someone sent me a picture from several months ago, pre-COVID, that he's standing in front of the Impact Television and, you know, said, came and saw some old friends, made some new ones. So I, I looked into this a little bit. He uh he was there, you know, hanging out, but he from what I understand, he was he did talk business also, but with COVID and the opportunities that came with COVID, you know, to where the EC3s and the Good Brothers and and these guys now became available and the Miros, you know, that kind of got pushed off to the side. So it's possible that we may see this dude in Impact Ring going forward or involved in the company in one way, shape, or form. From what I'm understanding, there were several signings that we were going to get. And I, I think we saw them go in that direction with the TNA No Place Like Home stuff. I think we saw uh, the way they were teasing some people and they were bringing some people in. I think we saw that they were going a certain direction, bringing some people in. And a lot got put on hold. And uh, I don't so I don't think the signings are, are done. I think we're going to see some new faces maybe by the end of the year. I don't think it's going to be aces and eights or anything like that, but uh, you know, maybe some of these older TNA names and then maybe a guy like Alex Riley. And uh, again, I'm a big fan of his. I feel like he can, he can kind of do the, uh, you know, have a career resurgence with impact and actually be a pretty big baby face star. So uh, thanks for checking in with me today, guys. Uh, it is your boy BQ. If you hung out through the entire length of this video, I appreciate it. And um, I will talk to you soon. Peace.